but it's hard to let go of what you've been holding on to for so long, even if it's not working anymore. It's really hard to let go. It's like, I beg you, see it differently. I beg you to let go. It's not normal. It's just old. It's time to drop it and move forward. You may be a product of your past, but you don't have to be a prisoner of your past. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready, and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative, and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. The devil is a lie. Just because you're used to it doesn't make it normal. Some of you, you are taking too much time trying to convince people to love you that do not matter. Tolerating and trying to get people engaged that don't matter, that don't care, that are never ever going to help you get into your destiny. I came to preach to somebody who everybody else might have given up on you and life might not be where you want it to be and you might not have been what you could have been, but it's not too late to become who you are. See, many things we don't do because of fact we want people to like us. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're going to lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. Who do you think you are? You're arrogant. What do you think you can do? You're selfish. Thanks, I got that. Poor thinking habits keeps most people poor, not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. The mind is like a factory, a mental factory, and whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory, and that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. As you think, so you become. program your mind because all that you will do or not do, have or not have, accomplish or not accomplish will be a direct derivative of what's going on inside of your mind. So if you don't get clear thinking on an issue, you won't be able to develop in that area. Look at somebody say it's time for a change. Well, well, what stops us? What stops us from making the changes that we need in our behavior, in our situation? It's, it's the mind. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your co-workers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter. This decision is yours and yours alone. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. They have some idea in their head, some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do, but they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it. You know, they don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, where do I start? And when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. God may be giving you more to work with than what you are working with at this time. You may have far more things that you can potentially do than what you're doing right now. That's why I don't like to hang with low thinking people because they'll make you underutilize what God has given you. You need somebody to challenge you that you could be doing more than what you're doing right now. You could have more than you have right now, and somebody's got to be bold enough to look you in the face and empower you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from you. For every time you have a plan, a dream, an aspiration, or a goal, 
Do you know what happens every time you have one of those? This thing comes along called life. Life is hard. It happens to everybody. Life has disappointments. It's got peaks and valleys. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. That's a valley. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you could retire. That's a valley. Somebody going to fire you for an unjust cause. That's a valley. Because it's life. You can stop thinking that life fitting to be easy because I got news for you. It ain't. And those problems you think you've got right now, when do problems really become problems? My problem becomes a real problem when I lose my perspective. My problem becomes a real problem when I give up and I just say, forget it. Your problem becomes a real problem when you start feeling sorry for yourself and have a pity party. Your problem becomes a real problem when you get bitter and you start blaming everybody else for your unhappiness. That's the real problem. Guys and gals, don't give up. Man, if, you're, if you get to the point where you're kind of weary and you're, you're going, I, I, I'm, I'm facing struggles at every turn, don't give up. You just need some faith, man. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. We end up acting in a way far different from the beliefs we've shouted. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. And more importantly, this leads to a loss of credibility within ourselves. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. So what kind of courage do you have? Is yours sort of floating between depending on the situation? Or do you know the difference between right and wrong for your life? And you've made up your mind. Our mind is the control tower of our life. All of our decisions are there. And the truth is, whatever we are today is the result of what we've been thinking about all those years. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't like what's going on around you, maybe you should ask yourself the question, what am I thinking about? What do I think about myself? What do I think about other people? I want you to ponder these four questions. Here's the first one, and that's why. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn, share as much as you can share, develop every skill you possibly can, see every human you possibly can, go to every class you possibly can, touch everybody you possibly can? Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. Work on your list of whys. One of the big thrusts for success is to come up with a strong enough why. In leadership training, here's what we learn. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision, we die. Without a vision, we perish. Without a dream, we're nothing. From the movie, The Professionals, from the movie, The Professionals, it said, we joined because we believed. We stayed because we were committed. We left because we were disillusioned, but we came back because we were lost. Without a dream, 
we are nothing. I'm asking you to sit down with your family and develop a dream strategy. I'm asking you to make a list of what, what you want. What kind of health do you want? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of income do you want? What kind of gifts do you wish to bestow? What kind of power would you like to have? What kind of influence would you like to have? I'm asking you to go home and work on the why. I'm asking you to have a vision. Now here's number two. Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question, why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? I want you to establish some of your goals. I want you to give thoughtful consideration to your goals. And why not? If a farm boy can wander out of Idaho and finally arrive at this extravaganza, why not you? If we've got good health for many, why not the rest? If it's happened for you, why not others? And why not you? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now here's number three. Why not you? I wish I could say that to each of you individually, but it would take a couple of lifetimes to sit down and talk with each of you individually. But I would rather do that. I'd rather sit down and talk with you and your family with a fire burning in the living room than to be standing on this platform. That's my true desire. I'd love to talk to you and your children face to face. That's what I'd really like to do. I'd love to spend a couple of days with each of you personally and pour out my heart, my soul, what's going on in my head, what's going on with me, see if we couldn't connect and find something valuable. But time doesn't permit for us to have those intimate conversations and get to know each other that well. So I've got to do it from up here, but I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you you've got the brains you can make decisions you can study the plan you can change your life you can grow immensely in the next few years you can make your dreams come true you can build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through you can become healthy you can become powerful why not you and i'm here to say that i'm ready to pledge my support to make your personal dreams come true i asked the question why not you but I'm not gonna ask it and just walk away. I'm gonna ask it and walk with you. And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? There never was a better time. And what a time now for us to take this dream and not let it die. Take this dream and give it life. Take this dream and breathe into it your own personal spirit until finally it becomes a flame that burns around the whole world. Let's go do it now. What we think about is really what controls us. This is a control tower, that everything else is a result of how we think. And we can't control everybody else in control of all of our circumstances, but we are going to respond to circumstances in one way or the other. And so what you have to ask is this, what is it that determines what I think? This. This mind of yours controls everything else in your life. Are you satisfied with your life as it is? Are you? Is your life giving you what you want? If you had your life to live over again, could you have done more than what you've done thus far? When I ask audiences that, most people agree, yes, I could have done more. I know I could have done more. I've wasted a lot of valuable time. You're going to lose something, lose money. You can recapture that. Don't lose time. You can't get that back. But I think being grateful probably is number one. If you've got a job, you've got to be grateful. Say, this isn't the greatest job in the world. Even if it's a transitional job getting you where you want to go, you've got to be grateful. You don't have to love your job or be passionate about your job, just passionate about staying steady, working hard, learning skills, doing this job so well that the next one will be even better. And taking such good care of this opportunity, another one will present itself. What's next for me? After all of this, I don't think that things just happen. 
I believe that they happen just. We have a mindset. We don't want to be the same coming out of this. That you, you want some radical change. That this could be a major defining moment for you. A day that turns your life around. If you have an extreme desire to wish to be successful so you can accomplish all you wish to accomplish be as generous as you'd like to be be as strong as you'd like to be and i think if you say you have to find your passion people find that a little bit confusing where would i find it and what could i be passionate about i guess you could start with saying i'm passionate about providing unusual success for myself and for my family then i think the key is to let what you want to accomplish let that grow where at first this is as far as you can see, but if you'll do that, you can say, wow, maybe I could multiply by two, by three, and expand my vision, accomplish a lot more. It's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. The key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. Then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. A few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a, challenging mission and this one was a little tough for me he said mr Ron, you've got pennies in your pocket you've got nothing in the bank the creditors are calling you're behind on your promises and he says here's how that occurs you've attracted up until now you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become now i said well how can i change all that he said very simple if you will change everything will change for you you don't have to change what's outside all you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. I got a telephone call five years ago. Company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired, looking for the next exotic beach. He said, no, no, Mr. Rohn, we've got a project for you. We're going to expand internationally. We can use your help. Next little while, we'll add a some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, I can get the job done. Now, how come, how come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed, I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions speaking economically now there's a lot of values to become but let's just talk economics is it possible to become that valuable and the answer is of course of course now let me give you the secret show said here's the secret mr Rohn. learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job once i got that it turned my life around learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job he said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. 
If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Need a little pick-me-up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes, listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen, so nothing interrupts your motivational moment, where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes, and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play. Misery loves company, but people go so far. When you're miserable and you're a negative person, you go very far to create misery and negativity in other people's lives. So I've learned to laugh. Some of it doesn't feel good to receive it, but I've learned to laugh at it because you understand that people have a job to do. Haters, being a hater is a full-time job. Being a miserable person who has a job to create misery for other people's lives is a full-time job. I mean, who wants to be unemployed? There are some folks in it that will just hate you because God likes you. You don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to mess up anything. You don't have to start a fight. They don't even have to know you. Most of my haters have never met me. I couldn't have done nothing to you because I don't even know you. How you gonna hate me if you don't even know me? Give me a chance to earn your hate. I just want to talk to you about haters for a second. Because we all got them. Everybody got haters. I didn't even know I had these many haters. Till I go on the internet, there they are. They just waiting on me. They don't even know me. They don't know you. They just be saying stuff. You don't even know where it come from. That's why we have good and we have evil. And at the same time, what I have an appreciation about is if you're online or if you run into somebody and they just so happens to be a hater and they end up saying something to you that will actually change your life and make you a better person. You may not like the way they're saying it, but if they're saying something that's the truth that could actually impact you and make a difference, then you're supposed to remain a student of life to learn, even if what you're learning is coming from a hater. Take the lesson from it, grow, mature, understand it, process, and then make the adjustments, and then you keep it moving. Understand that haters have a job to do. Process it, understand it. It balances our world. A leader must have, Napoleon said, a mastery of the details. All can be lost with just a couple of missing details. On the trip to the moon, everything has to work. There's a thousand, several thousand moving parts. There's several thousand pieces to the project of getting to the moon and coming back, and all of them have to work. 
And then there's the backup systems for something if something goes wrong to back it up. That kind of mastery of detail is so vitally important. The drama is in the details. Master the details. Good advice, Napoleon Hill. Willingness to assume full responsibility. What happened to me might not have been my responsibility, but what I do about it is my full responsibility. If a hailstorm destroys the farmer's crop, he wasn't responsible for that. But his responsibility now begins when the hailstorm is over, when he asks the question of himself, what should I do now? Wherever you are in the world, just do me a favor and share this video. Because just maybe somebody is at home stressed, depressed, frustrated, miserable, because they're on the receiving end of hate on you guys could make a difference in somebody's out there life. Understand, they have a job to do. Look for the lesson in the hate. Learn from it, grow from it, mature from it, process it, and then you keep it moving. I want you to understand that haters have a job to do. You have hate and you have love. Never give a hater a stage to stand on because they want nothing more than to be negative or do something negative and then have everybody to give them attention about it. Think about how far a hater will go. I've learned that insecure people will go above and beyond to create insecurities. Hurt people will go above and beyond to hurt people. There is no worse feeling than that of invisibility. You know, when you are doing your very best and it goes unrecognized, it makes it kind of harder to want to keep doing it. And when you feel unseen, especially by the people whose attention and approval you crave the most, it can create a compulsion in your life to start doing things that are not even really consistent with your character in order to receive from people a confirmation that can be taken away just as easily as it was given. So my message is, if you have felt unnoticed, unappreciated, uncelebrated, and insignificant in this kingdom, what is unseen is often what is most significant. We must drive the dark side of our nature into a small corner and let the positive side flourish. Early we must learn to exercise self-control. Power is a wonderful thing, but it must be exercised properly to benefit, not to destruction. So self-control is certainly necessary to be a strong leader so that you can become the best example. The example of having your temper well managed, having that dark side of your nature under control. The best example of choosing wise words and not being careless. That kind of control. Control of your desires so that they fit into the positive side of life and not the negative side. Self-control, very important. When you decide I have had enough, a leader is about to be born. Toleration is the graveyard of leaders. And that's why we lack leadership. Everybody wants to be liked. Nobody wants to shrug the boat. And that's why we're not leaders, because we want everyone to agree with us. We still apologize for being successful. We feel ashamed to be in charge. When you still carry your history, you are afraid of success. Because you may lose your friends who ain't going nowhere. Very subtle problems. Your attitude is so powerful, it creates your atmosphere. It also is a source of your natural lifestyle. And if you're gonna change your life, you gotta change your attitude. Now here's the bottom line. Your belief system is the source of your attitude. I want to say how much I appreciate you because you hated me on a level that I didn't even know I was on. And you hated me so long that I had to go back and stare at myself 
to see what you saw in me that made you hate me that bad and I started discovering who I was because you changed my perception to everyone who is watching this video no matter what you are doing to achieve a goal or to accomplish a mission or to improve yourself or change for the good for yourself and you want to see changes in your life despite of any one of those things that you are focusing on doing you have to understand something there are always going to be a certain group of people who are going to hate on you for no apparent reason but it's going to be dependent on how you respond to it and react to it. You can either react by allowing the negative words of those haters based on what they have said consume you and to let it rule over you and allow the voices of those negative words to get into you and then to the point of defeating that you cannot do it or you can ignore and don't be bothered with it and then stay focused on what you are doing. Have a plan to improvise and then adapt and then overcome in order to accomplish whatever that you are focused on for the good for yourself. If we talk about getting set and free from sin and shame, we need to get set free from people. Not that we don't care about them, but we can't be controlled by them. If you have a certain group of people who are hating on you for no apparent reason, they're sitting there saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, you cannot accomplish this, you're not able or capable of doing that. That ain't gonna never happen into your life for the good. The first thing you need to do is ignore what they said and don't be bothered with it. And then in the midst of it, while these people are saying all of that jibber jabber and stuff, do not argue with them. Focus and work and move in silence behind closed doors. That's what you need to do. Here's what's called the self-knowledge acid test. Quickly, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Is it a client you've been trying to sign for several months? Is it a major sale you've been trying to make? Is it a promotion? Is it a partnership in the firm? Quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Achievements that you want to make achievements that will take a while to get write them down again without thinking too much about it quickly list your three most important personal and spiritual goals things that will make a difference in your personal life is it going to church more often than holidays grasping all you can from the sunday sermon is it spending more quality time with your kids is it turning the TV off during the dinner hour and actually talking about the important things in life with your family? Is it making more dates with your spouse? Is it planning a much needed family vacation? What is it? What are the important goals in your personal and spiritual life? Is one of them making a conscious effort to exercise more, to eat better, to lose some weight, to get in shape? What are the three most important personal and spiritual goals that you have? Write them down. Doesn't matter what they are, just write them down. Now, take some time to really visualize what the achievement of these goals would look like. What does your future hold for you if you landed that big client? What does your future look like if you got that promotion? If you spent more time with your family? If you planned more outings with your spouse? What does your future look like? Really spend some time on this now. It's important stuff. What does it all look like? Ask yourself, is this really my goal? Is this truly what I want? Is it a positive goal? Is it important enough to me to become what it takes to reach this goal? Is it mine? Is it worth it? 
If your three goals on the career side and three goals on the personal side don't stand up to these questions, you need to take some time to carefully redefine a few things. Redefine your list. Redefine where it is that these goals came from. Redefine what actually is important to you. Redefine how hard you'll really work to get them. Now, there are two parts to this goal setting and redefining process. There's two parts. Number one, don't set your goals too low. An interesting thing that we teach in leadership, don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure is on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. Now here's the second part on setting goals. Number one is don't set your goals too low. Number two is don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd known back then how much it was going to cost me, I never would have gone for them. But I didn't know. Don't sell out. An ancient phrase says, count the cost. Count the cost if it won't make you happy to get it. If you become less in your pursuit of getting it, if it's not worth the life you'll lead after you get it, it's not worth it. Now let's talk a little more about self-preparation. Self-preparation has two benefits. The first benefit of self-preparation is that it moves you toward your goal. You've already got it in mind. You know where you want to go. You're getting ready for it. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do. And by getting ready to achieve your goals, you're moving closer to your goals. That's how it works. The second major benefit to self-preparation is that it refuels your ambition. Your activity refuels your ambition. The things that you are doing today are getting you ready for tomorrow. It's exciting. You know that you're getting closer every day. Ambition must be kept alive, be kept active, must continue to move forward. Otherwise, you're just daydreaming. You must keep active, keep moving forward so your ambition can fuel you, motivate you, get you where you want to be. Self-preparation. The benefits are, number one, it moves you toward your goals, and number two, it refuels your ambition. Be prepared. Get ready. This method of self-preparation involves three steps. Step one, carefully consider where the next opportunity for reaching your goal will originate. Where will it come from? Will it come from networking with your colleagues? Will it come from reading the last book that you bought? The book that's still sitting on your shelf waiting to give you some answers? Will it come from you taking the time to think it out? Where will it come from? The next opportunity that will push you forward. If you don't know, here's what you have to do. For each major goal of yours, the top priorities on your list, for each of these, take out a separate piece of paper, one single sheet per major goal, write down your goal at the top and start listing all reasonable resources. Write down every possible place that you could find the opportunity to achieve this goal. And with each resource, classify them. Ask yourself, is this resource a sure thing? A good bet? About even chances? Unlikely? A long shot? Ask yourself these questions and classify all of the resources you have written down. That's the first step. The second step in this method of self-preparation is to make sure you know what you need to do to be prepared for your opportunity. Take your sure things first. Figure out what you need to do to be prepared when they happen. Break down your preparation into concrete steps. 
Make sure that you know exactly what you have to do to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes your way. Let's say that one of the top priorities on your career list of goals is to get this new client. Let's take it one step further to say that on your resource list for this goal is to have a lunch meeting with a friend who just happens to be the mentor of the client you're going after. Is this friend of yours a sure bet on your resource list? Well, let's say he is. I mean, you know this guy is a tremendous consulting source for the client you want. The client you want really listens to the opinions and advice of your friend. So you're getting ready to have lunch with your friend. What do you do? You've got to make sure that you're up on all the knowledge and the industry data that will impress your friend. Make him realize that he knows someone who could benefit from your knowledge and your vitality and your spirit and your experience. Impress him. Impress him so much that he goes back to his friend, the client you're after, and tells this prospective client of yours that he needs to do business with you. Be prepared. Go through your entire list of goals and resources and classify them. Break each resource into concrete steps of preparation. Start by working on the sure bets first and then move down the line. The long shots will come through every so often, but start with the resources that will serve you best now. Get ready for the opportunities before they come your way. Step three in the self-preparation method is to do all you can to make each opportunity more likely to happen. After you've determined what you have to do to get ready to be prepared, after you've determined this, see what you can do to expedite the process. What can you do to increase the likelihood of this opportunity? Go over it and over it and over it. Use these three methods again and again as you assess where you are now and where you have to go next to keep moving toward the achievements that are most important to you. Step one, consider your resources. Step two, determine what you have to do to get ready. Step three, expedite the opportunities and by the way this method of self-preparation works wherever you are in your journey whether you're close to your goals or whether you're just starting your journey of self-direction this method works have working knowledge to draw from continually work on yourself in preparation of where you want to be build a reservoir of thoughts and ideas and philosophies and experiences that are your own Build, grow, change, get ready, be prepared. Be prepared for a life worth living. Now here are the four ifs that make life worthwhile. Number one, life is worthwhile if you learn. Nothing worse than being stupid. Life is worthwhile if you learn. Learn from your personal experiences. Learn from other people's experiences. Second, life is worthwhile if you try. Now you've got to take what you've learned and see if you can try your hand at it. Someone says, well, you can't try, you have to do. No, you have to try. I put the bar up two feet and ask the kids who can jump two feet. I can, some say. I can't, some say. I don't know, some say. How are you going to know? You don't. You've just got to try. Just back off and run at it. How are you going to know if you don't try? Now, what if you knock the bar down? Does that mean you can't jump two feet? No. You have to what? Try it again. Of course, you have to try. Try it another way, but try. Try your hand at it. When the record book on you is finished, let it show your wins and your losses, but don't let the record book show that you didn't try. Next, Life is worthwhile if you stay. You've got to learn to stay. Now, you don't have to stay forever. Just stay till you see it through. A guy builds a foundation and then he wanders off somewhere and builds another foundation. He's got these foundations scattered all across the country. I mean, no walls, no roofs, just a bunch of foundations. Not a good reputation. Stay. 
You don't have to stay forever, just stay to finish something. Don't fall into the trap of less than refined sophistication. Stay till it's over. Need a little pick-me-up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes, listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen, so nothing interrupts your motivational moment, where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes, and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play.